It's time to take a trip into New York City's Upper East Side to try some authentic Mexican fare. And that's starting right now. According to the website for Mole Mexican Bar and Grill in New York City, the owners opened their first location in 1991 and have since grown to more than three locations across New York City. That's over 30 years of history. They have a mole sauce that is supposedly handmade in Mexico. We were visiting my brother and his wife on a Sunday morning, which means the brunch menu was popping. What I found impressive was the bar. They have around 125 tequilas of Available, as well as adventurous drinks like stuff called El Diablo, El Vampiro, or Sex in a Mexican Prison. I mentioned this was a trip to visit my brother. Before we got to the restaurant, we took a stroll through the Central Park Zoo, you know, for the kid. And then we stopped at a little fancy bakery a few blocks away for a macaron. We had a little time to kill before brunch, so why the heck not? Mole, located at 1735 Second Avenue in the Upper East Side of New York City, is a cute little restaurant. From the outside, it's totally unassuming and kind of blends into the neighborhood. There's some tables outside to dine al fresco, but that wasn't happening at all that day. <laughs> After we walked through that entire Central Park Zoo on the recorded hottest day this year, we were definitely down for some air conditioning. <laughs> As we entered the restaurant, as I said, that bar caught my eye. Just from all those tequilas that are available, their website touts that there are 125 different tequilas. I counted around 85-ish, so I'm sure they have some squirreled and locked away somewhere. The decor of the restaurant shows that in addition to all the colorful and ornamentation of the heritage and those fixtures and everything going on in that restaurant, that they also have some character and personality. And that's really important when you're looking for somewhere fun to eat. When I browse Mexican menus, the first thing I look for is mole. Their menu online, as well as their About Me page, talks about authentic Mexican mole. And for mole, what I think of is mole poblano, which is that rich, dark brown, red version that's made with upwards of 30 ingredients, including chilies, spices, nuts, and chocolate. Their standard menu has every single permutation of Mexican or like Tex-Mex fare that you would find in most Mexican restaurants. There is definitely something there for everyone, including my son who got some pretty banging looking French toast. Complicating matters that day was brunch. I'm not going into how many different Mexican dishes they had that had eggs with it, but suffice to say, they all sounded amazing. On top of that, they were heavily advertising this mole burger, which had a 10 ounce Pat Lafreda patty that they called a short rib mix, which had sauteed onions and poblano peppers, Monterey Jack cheese, sour cream, and pickled jalapenos. Between this menu description and the little signs that they had on the table that are taunting you to order that, I actually have no idea how I didn't order it. Especially because the chicken with mole poblano dish that I was planning on ordering from browsing the menu from back home was nowhere to be found on the menu that day. I really like enchiladas too, so I went for their enchiladas with mole poblano, which we'll get back to in just a moment. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, hit that thumbs up so YouTube knows. <laughs> You can't do brunch without a beverage. So I knew I was getting something involving some tequila. I had to do it. Margarita sounded great, but I've never had sex in a Mexican prison before. So that's what I had to try. It's described as tequila, cranberry juice, and a splash of freshly squeezed lime juice. All in all, not a bad drink at all. Definitely refreshing and also a little bit complex because of that kind of bitter cranberry taste. Can't say this was a disappointment at all pretty good. As we were sipping cocktails, they brought out some chips and salsa, but we also opted for some homemade guacamole made with onion, cilantro, tomato, and jalapenos, as you would make guacamole. The question of mild, medium, and spicy raised a little bit of a debate. Is mild just going to be completely weak? What's the difference between medium and spicy? And spicy to who, the chef or the customers? We finally ended up settling for medium, and that ended up being a little bit divisive. I quite enjoyed the spice level myself, but I'm also a really big heat lover. This was definitely hot, which partially explains why some of the non-spicy lovers didn't really love it that much. You'll just never get to the point on a heat index where somebody who loves spicy food and somebody who can't really tolerate it end up with a compromise. It's just never gonna happen. We'll never get on the same page. And that's okay. We just gotta remember to learn to admit that. The main flaw with this guacamole was the roughness of the blend. It's a good thing to see bigger chunks of tomato or onion or even avocado in a guacamole because that tells you they're making it nice and fresh there. But when they get so big that you can't grab them with a chip, that's kind of annoying. And that definitely happened here. But it's not exactly something to get negative about. All right, the guac was chunky. You either eat it or you don't eat it, and then you move on. As far as my enchiladas de mole poblano, according to the menu, this was listed as, and I gotta take it to the notes, three chicken enchiladas smothered with mole poblano sauce and melted cheese, then garnished with avocado slices, onion, and sesame seeds, served with rice and beans on the side, like everything else. 
This was cool and all, but mine took forever to come out. Everyone else had their food well before I did, which worked out for me because I was the last person eating that chips and guac. But it was also a little bit anxiety inducing, as it always is when some people get their food and others don't. But I'm the type of person who's fine with people starting without me. I don't care, don't let your food get cold. I eat fast enough, it's fine. When my plate finally came out, it was comically hot. Like the type of heat where it makes you move back from the table a little bit. Visually, this was an absolutely stunning dish. The colors of a good mole poblano are one of those things that send me into a great space mentally. And I just knew this was gonna be good based on the colors and the aromas. But as I got consumed by the beauty of this, my mind lost track of the fact that this was scalding hot. So that first bite was a little bit painful, but it's the kind of pain that's completely worth it. Everything about this mole was absolutely perfect. perfect. I'm not gonna go into individual tasting notes here because 30 ingredients, come on. But you get that rich mouthfeel of all those fatty components that are in there, the distinct flavors of all those reconstituted dry chilies, as well as fresh chilies, the earthy aromas and tastes from all those complex spices. You'd think that with all the components that go into a mole, that it would just be a confusing mess of flavors. And that's probably true when it's not executed well, but the mole here was totally awesome. The enchiladas were also really good. It's kind of difficult to perceive the chicken other than like a delivery device for the mole. And that was definitely true with this dish. It wasn't dry or anything. It was just there to pick up the sauce. Corn tortillas in this dish are just perfect because that texture plays really well with the mole, which is like an emulsified sauce. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of glad that I got this as enchiladas because I just love that taste of ground corn with mole poblano. We have some more New York City related videos on the way, including some of the most hyped cookies in New York City. So subscribe so these come up in your feed. And I love all different types of Mexican experiences. Click into this playlist right here to check out all those Mexican restaurant adventures.